Here it is. The Haunted Hinsdale House, also known as the Dandy House. You can see he's got the bars on the windows here because uh, I guess a lot of people have tried to break in here. We are here. It is super cold out here. I'm definitely gonna have to put a hoodie on. I'm freezing. Yeah, you cold? it's so super cold. cold. We're here. Here's the place. Yeah, the famous Hinsdale house. So we're gonna check this out. We're spending the whole night here, guys. Yes. 24 hours lockdown. We're gonna be in yes. here until tomorrow. So that means we're gonna be exploring inside this house tonight, and we're gonna be out in those woods back there. We gotta see what's going on in those woods. There's a, a folklore story about this house. Um, and basically it was just told from generation to generation that there were two brothers that lived here, that they would um, rape, steal, and pillage people from the stagecoach trail which ran off the main road there was a way station in the field next door here and basically they would store their body you know store their bodies in the basement or up here um, and just coming up with theories um, this look at this lip right what is that? see this lip on here uh-huh one of the theories is, is that this maybe was like a trap door that came down on time. Um, why would this? Why does this have to be like this? You know. Right, right. Why is this lip here? That's um, very strange. And they were basically locked up here, and then he murdered them and threw their bodies out onto the, onto the outside after the winter thaw. We had no proof of any brothers living in this house until about last year. Um, and then we, there's a researcher by the name of Cassidy Nichols, and she saw that in my timeline that I had actually screwed up. And uh, basically, you know, in writing the wrongs of the misspelled name that I had, um, allowed us to date the lineage of the house back to 1853. And in 1853, it was the Everett's brothers mm. that built the house. And, you know, I don't want to pin them as murderous brothers because just researching them, they, like iron workers, you know, they they were hard-working Irish folks and it's funny like I always get called to Iowa to do speeches and then one of them actually migrated to Iowa in Davenport and actually I got to go see his body there and he actually lived in this house really yeah wow. so just kind of some some things that we're planning on doing you know there's gonna be ground penetrating radar on the outside of the outside of the house that's why we're trying to take back all the property oh okay um, but there are, you get a lot of EVPs that'll say I'm dead, I'm buried, help, find me, all throughout the whole property in the house if you're doing, like even if you just use your phone, uh -huh. or recorder on, and um, you'll get stuff like that all the time, you'll get it through the spirit box for sure. Um, there is, you know, back in the 1970s they, they said it was a demonic, possibly demonic case here. Um, I don't feel it's demonic. Mm -hmm. Like I've done, I've dealt with a demonic case before, and at this house, there's definitely something that's sinister, maybe darker, that comes out once in a while. But you, your best thing is to just ignore it and move on and go do something else. Um, but I can, I can imagine if you engaged it, that it could f with you. We don't know what it is at this point, or why it's here. Wow. Um, you'll get on these stairs. We've got pictures of entities, full body apparitions walking up, pictures of legs. My team had come here, and this is this basically was getting ready to be sold. Um, the the house was getting ready to be sold, um, or knocked down, not sold. Mm -hmm. uh, all the electrical, the ductwork was ripped out of it, and it was just basically a shell. Um, and we were basically here saying goodbye because it was 
gonna two, within two weeks I was gonna be gone. And this is one of the places that really stood out to me as one of the more active locations that I've ever been to as a paranormal investigator. Mm -hmm. um, but up to that point, we only really knew about this failed exorcism, you know, back in the 1970s, and this family that had the flight fleet and um, how that affected them. And uh, quite honestly, when we were here, that uh, was me, my co-founder Cameron, and then Michelle, who was the house manager at the time. We were just standing in the kitchen, and we had a camera on ourselves, and, and uh, they were talking about the exorcism, this, exorcism, that, and it, nothing was happening. And that was like a pivotal point for me, because I had done some research on the house and found that there was a family that lived here, the Misnick family, who actually owned that creepy doll on the case there. Um, and they died, you know, within a few few months of each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I had found some videos on them, and I had called out to Flo. And I had a K2 meter in my hand. This thing stayed lit in my hand after I called out her name. I felt like I had, like, a connection with her. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked her a ton of questions down here and then I said, Flo, I'm going to go up the stairs. Can you hold my hand as we go up the stairs? And as I walked up these stairs, the K2 meter lit, stayed lit in my hand all the way in the main bedroom. And I had like goosebumps up my arms or the chill. And then I, had, I remember losing her as I tried to cross over into Mary's room. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the photographer on my team, Louie, I called him. I'm like, Louie, plaster that place. Plaster the stairs and the upstairs with, picture, with uh, pictures. And then he came back and right on the stairs you could see like two legs. Uh, of a ghostly, ghostly legs going upstairs, and I, I don't know. I was at that point, I was full fledged trying to buy the place. Right, right. Yeah, so it was like I, I did not want to see this place gone. I, it was like telling me, okay, you've re you've researched it, you found some more information, and we're giving you something, and now you got to find out more. The basement would open up on its own, so people would be sitting there taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> And the door would open up and be like, ah. It looks pretty know, interesting the, down there. The, the septic system had to all be redone too, so we had to actually do a, a leach bed um, into the back, and that was a lot more than I, I anticipated. And uh, we were playing with it right inside the living room there. Oh, yeah? And they were just saying, what, uh, what, what's happening with our house here? What, what's going on here, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, as they were doing the Ouija board, the planchette actually flung off the table as they were holding on to it. This creepy doll here that they had in their living room, um, which is the original one, there was something next to it and it come flying off the shelf. And the, and the girl, uh, one of the daughters, thought that they were, it was staring at them. So they actually took this doll and took it out of the house. No, it's back. And he was one of the family friends. This is where he stood during the exorcism. He was here during the actual exorcism when it happened. The whole family was sitting here on the floor, like right here, on their knees with the priest and the psychic and uh, when they did the, the exorcism which took about a minute or so it, the whole house they said the whole house started shaking and we've actually experienced it kind of before and it's not an earthquake or anything like that where you felt like it feels like a tremor you know right, so this yeah. is where they perform the exorcism these dolls over here even though they look creepy were made to look creepy uh, my friend that owns the old Licking County Jail and Newark, Ohio makes them. They're called long gone dolls. So they have no significance whatsoever, nor do they have any attachments or are they creepy at all. But besides, for the, they look creepy. They make it on TV a lot. And this was actually a bedroom. So this, if you look on the floor here, this was actually, um, this would have been the door and this would have been another bedroom. This would have been Beth's room that you're standing in right now. Oh, yes, that's what So we named each of the rooms so you know their names. Okay. Michael's room was over there. Laura's room was the smallest one up to the right, and then Mary's room was the other one, and then the other one was the master bedroom. Laura's the, the daughter that she actually ended up committing suicide as well. Oh. So she's actually lost two of her kids, and she, trust me, blames a lot of it on this house. So it's, it's sad. I don't feel like I'm really affected that too much, but a lot of people say that we're put here for a reason, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm... Like Greg and Dana said, I'm here to feed it. I don't know.
All right, so we just talked to Daniel Class. He just showed us around the house. We are here at the Hinsdale house. Right now, though, we're leaving to go to the Olean Library. Daniel's going to do a little talk over there, so we're going to go check that out. After that, we're coming back, and that's when it begins. That's when the investigation begins. We're going to go back in the house. We're going to go in the woods. We'll probably even live stream tonight for y'all, so it's going to be pretty crazy. We're so excited. This is so cool. We're super excited. We're out here in the middle of nowhere for y'all. Yeah, look at this. Middle of nowhere. Middle of nowhere. Hey, take a look at this road. These are the kind of roads we're driving on right now. We gotta get from out here in Hinsdale over to Oland to go see this talk. And then we're coming back in the dark. ...in them when they're outside. Here are some of the outside people in them when they're in, on the inside. And it just seems like a whole lot to deal with. Um, you know, the, a woman dancing around the pond, a woman with red hair, I mean, a lot of it's, um, I'm trying to figure out, you know, like some of her stories, because some of the stuff that she talks about in her book still happens. Like we'll hear, um, sounds like uh, chanting coming from the forest, drum beats, sometimes flute beats, and we'll go up in the forest behind the house and look to see if there's anything there, and there's nothing coming from there. Um, we've had teams from five different countries at the house in the past year. Um, it's booked almost every weekend. There's investigators coming in now because it's been on TV so much. It's actually, the, the, the uh, Cattaraugus County has actually taken a big liking to the place because it's drawing in so many people as, uh, on a tourism aspect um, from different areas. Um, but th these, these teams that are coming in are taking what we, the stories and running with them and then trying to come up with more answers for us. Um, and then we're trying to plug in what they're learning and putting it into this big puzzle, but the puzzle just keeps getting bigger and bigger. This is kind of what the house looked like when I bought it, and, and the grass was four foot tall. Um, if anybody's been down that way to take a look at it, you, you can see that it's been much improved since I purchased it. Half a million honeybees in the floorboards of the house. Um, I could have just sprayed them and killed them, but it was personal to me. I didn't want to, them to die. It was such a large colony of bees, and. They spent a lot of time making that honey honeycomb that was in the floorboards. It was like four foot long in the room. So we had the local beekeepers come out and remove them safely. You know, there were a few casualties, unfortunately, but most of them we got to, got to save. And that honey was so good. The thing was, is Clara talked about these bees in the 1970s in her book, how they couldn't get rid of these bees. And uh, for me, if I was gonna start running tours and um, having people up at the house was a safety issue for me, so I definitely had to figure out a way to uh, remove them and keep them away from the house. So now I have a guy that comes in twice a year and sprays the house and um, just makes sure that they don't try to re-nest back in there. And then, I'll see if I can get this to play. Watch this video. Watch Bobby, she's sleeping right there. possible. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be active, you know. And uh, basically what happens is she's sleeping here, and um, she's got a blanket on, and the blanket pops up. Just pops up. She's in the middle, you know, they have the camera on her all night, and it looks like a groundhog. What is that? This is at Hinsdale. In 1969, Ed Lorraine Warren, who are pretty famous demonologists, uh, they've been on TV, they're all over the place. The, the, what's that movie that they have out uh, with Annabelle? The Conjuring. The Conjuring, yeah. Yes. So that, that was based on one of their cases. Um, they actually were here doing a, a conference, you know, speaking at a conference, and uh, Father Al, they were typed with Father Al uh, from St. Bonaventure. And uh, he actually brought them into the house uh, to show them the case and what was going on in his family. And, uh, the, I, I remember when we were filming Paranormal Lockdown there, and Ed called Lorraine because she since passed away. But they, she said, uh, he said, well, Lorraine, what, 
what advice do you give to Nick while he's doing going through this investigation for three days? And she said, just pray. Just pray, you know, because she could only remember what, you know, what it was like back then. Comments from him and, and Clara going back and forth, and some of the McMahon O'Brien family that lived in the house uh, prior, you know, uh, there are some vaults at St. Bonaventure that are locked that I can't get into, and usually that means it's to protect the living. So I, I don't know, I'm gonna try to see if I can get in now since Lorraine's died, uh, but they still may not let us in there. I, I feel like I've gotten a lot of information out of the uh, files of what they have. Um, uh, it really tells the story of what Clara went through and his counseling back then with her um, was amazing. My phone won't focus in on the house. That's weird. Don't freak me out, okay? Yeah, my phone just wouldn't focus. Now it's focused. That's so weird. Alright, guys. First, we're just going to do a little walk through of the place so we can check it out. See if anything gets picked up. From what I've been told, this is the most haunted house in New York. I've done a lot of research on this place. I watched watch a lot of people come here. And there's been some real crazy stuff in here. There is still power down here. This isn't like completely abandoned. It was though, before Daniel purchased it. Daniel Class has his own website. And you can find him on various social medias, but he's uh, the one that wanted to bring this place back, and he's had a lot of contributors, a lot of people have donated. These are actually uh, made. These aren't of any significance. These are made by like a local artist, I believe he said. Those are really cool. For those of you that don't know and haven't heard much about this house, we're actually standing right in the room where they performed the exorcism in the 1970s and it actually right failed. Right here um, is a similar kit to what they actually used in the exorcism. Yes, that is a real mask kit there. And these are some arrowheads that were found on the property. Daniel was showing these to us earlier as well. And I mean, he's got a whole box of artifacts, different things that have been found in this house. It's incredible. Do you see over the light? Yeah. You want to pass it up to me? Sure. Just so I can kind of hold it in here. So, from what I remember, I'm pretty sure this was Lori's room, right? Right here to the to the right. I don't know. Look. Sign. You right? Laura. Laura. Sorry, not Lori, Laura. So Laura is actually the one that uh committed suicide afterward after living in this house. And this was her bedroom. There's an old bird cage. That's crazy. Definitely has like an eerie feeling up here. It feels totally different than the downstairs. Totally. I bet that is like original wallpaper. Look at it. I mean, yeah, look, it's down to the original boards right there. Mm-hmm. Now this over here is the master bedroom. So this is, sorry, man. I literally just heard something over there. Let's just take a look around here. Um, I wanted to get a feel for this place at night. 
and just kind of do a little explore before we sit down anywhere and Did you hear that? Yeah, I don't know what that was. That was weird. I wonder if that was the camera making that noise. I don't know. There's just a chair in this closet. Who would sit there alone? I don't know. A brave person. And then a mirror there. It's almost like you can just sit in that chair and like reflect on yourself. It's a random chain here. This is the infamous Mary Room. Underneath here is the bees that uh, Dan was talking about. I believe he said 500,000, something like that, over 500,000? Yeah, when he actually bought the house. Now here's what's weird about this room. All of the insects collect in this room. They're always in here. I mean, if we came in here midsummer. There'd probably be like hundreds of flies in here. I walked up here earlier, and no lie, a fly hit me in the face. Look, you can literally see the dead bugs on the ground. Wow. They just like come in here and die, dude. Look at that. Wow. You guys see this? There's just dead bugs all over the floor. It's the craziest thing, man. And uh, they don't quite know why they collect, but there's definitely a lot of rumors on why bugs collect in certain areas. And a lot of people can say it's something dark, or something along the lines of that. But he said he has experienced somewhat of a something dark here. And it may not be here all the time, but from time to time it is. <laughs> Look at this old carriage right here with some dolls in it. Yeah, that's that's pretty creepy. Wow. I'm gonna have to go first. Alright, here, take your light. <laughs> oh, sorry, but I'm kinda creeped out. Yeah. Again, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. Most people that check this place out will come with a team. Oh yeah, I'll go down first so you can show them this really cool. Did you hear that? What was that? It's really cool. It's really cool. It's really cool. Could have sworn I heard something. No, I did too. You did? Yeah. Anyway, there's usually teams of like three, three to six people on average in here. We're just two people. All right. We're lone wolfing it here, and that's uh, pretty unheard of. But yeah. We're ready. I'm gonna see if I can get a little zoom in here for you. So right now he's looking at a crawl space with some of the original stuff um, from the dandies who lived here in the 1970s. Yeah, so this is original stuff from the house. Looks like real brick from the house there. So there's artifacts in here if you ever do come in. Check it out, man. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Look at the walls in here. Do you guys see this? I mean, this place is creepy. Let's go back downstairs. Almost tripped. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You know what time it is. I want to go down to the basement. Right now we're walking through the bathroom. As you can tell, it's a really small bathroom. And so you hear, you see this original door here. He told me that they found this door in the floorboards. It was literally under the floor. Like, they don't even know why it was in there. And they, they found a bunch of stuff inside the wood. These little bullhead things, that, they're like this big, little trinkets. One was placed in the wall over here. They found it over there. And then they found another one over here. And it was under the floorboards. It's almost like they were strategically placed. In. Now, this is hella dangerous if you don't watch your step. All right, so let's go down here. I'm scared of basements. Oh, I know you are. John, don't, go, go slower, please. I can't believe you're making me do this. It's not even a very large basement. Hold on a 
a second. Something's wrong with my jacket. Um, what? Dude, look at this hole in the ground. There's a hole in the wall here. And you could just see far back under the rafters. Let me see that light. You can see so far back in there. That's so wild. There's chairs down here. I know, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm kind of losing quality here by zooming, but I just wanted you to see like how deep this, this is a random hole in the wall, yo. That is creepy. picture frame over here. I'm just trying to get a good view of the place. Man, this is nutty, guys. As an explorer, you know I had to explore the whole place. All right, take your light, Amanda. Thank you. Let's go Look, back upstairs. <laughs> Amanda's uh, little cardigan got, Amanda's caught, cardigan on got caught on the door. All right, so right now we're doing a spirit box. We're going to see if we can get any intelligent response inside the Hinsdale house through the spirit box. I think this will be recorded on here at the same time. Just to see if we can go back to it. Yeah, yeah. I just heard something. I just heard a woman's voice. Is there a woman in here? It's flowing here. Is there anyone here that would like to say hello? What's that noise? I don't know. That noise coming from outside. What the hell is that noise? Dude, what is that? I don't know if this is picking up on the phone right now, but that was the craziest thing I've probably ever heard. It sounded like like almost like rumble. I heard it over the, the spirit box. And this thing is super loud. I'm gonna try to turn it on again. I'm gonna try to turn the volume down a little bit. Do you wanna have it go like forward this time maybe? It's like acting up now. Of course it is. <laughs> what is that? It's just like playing white noise. I've never heard that before. It's not going to go through the Dude, channel. it's not working. What do you mean? Let me try. It's not sleeping. It's not sleeping? No. Dude, it's not sleeping. It's not doing anything. This has never happened. Like, literally, we've never had a problem with this. Dude, I'm not playing none of the fuck. None of the buttons are working, dude. None of the buttons are working on our spirit box right now. Dude, I thought I just heard a voice actually. Oh my I'm god. Freaking I'm freaking out. No, I'm freaking I can't out. even turn it off. It won't turn off? It won't turn off, dude. You're freaking me out, man. I'm not kidding right Stop now. Yelling. Stop oh my yelling. gosh, dude. All of the hair is standing up on my arm right now. Dude. The spirit box won't even turn off. I have never experienced a phenomenon like this, guys. We we just got this recently for this reason. But we have tried it out before, and oh, we're yeah. just playing around We've, with like, it. We've like tested it out many times. Yeah, yeah, home. absolutely. We, because you know, in, in preparation for this, we definitely wanted to throw some test runs. Never once have I seen an issue like this. Look, you hear me clicking the buttons? None of the buttons are working, dude. All of the buttons stopped working right now, dude. Why is it 
stuck there. Dude, I'm gonna try to take the batteries out. Yeah, see if like it froze. Something, dude. I've never seen anything like that. I've never even seen this happen to anybody before. Not once. We've never had an issue. Let's see what the box does. Oh, wow. Now it's working. Dude. That is weird. That cannot be, like, confirmed or debunked. I don't know what happened there. But that has never happened. That's Nothing weird. has ever froze our spirit box. Is there something in here that just messed with our spirit box? Is something messing with our equipment? My phone died as soon as I got here, by the way. Yeah. That's one of the first things I told Dan is that we got here with 100% battery. It dropped to 40 after taking three pictures, so. Is there someone in here? Hello. That sounded like hello. Nah. Dude. Who was that? I don't know. Are you okay with us staying here tonight? Was that a no? That would sound like no, dude. Was that a no, dude? I just, I would have sworn I just heard a girl say no. 